When asked to name the top film festivals in Scotland, most people will be able to tell you about the red carpet glitz of Edinburgh or the groundbreaking programming at Glasgow. But it takes a particular type of film connoisseur to point you in the direction of Dunoon. But with a packed lineup of local and international films, live music and a range of exciting workshops, Dunoon was where we were headed, no matter the weather or the distance. We had arrived on the final day of the festival and seemed to have hit the jackpot with regards to the films and guests on the programme. First up was Caledonian Mumblecore's funny and moving debut feature, Super November. Oh my god, Darren, he's so great. He's such stoic. He's like a granite statue of a firm but fair prime minister. Mm, do you know his name this time? I don't know. Oh, I love him so much. The film follows a group of friends living in Glasgow as the country is plunged into a political crisis and the terrifying shadow of fascism begins to encroach on the normality of their day-to-day -day lives. With a standout script from Josie Long and impressively natural performances from the cast, this micro-budget directorial debut from Douglas King is a must-see. Well, it's got a point. One of the great things about film festivals is the opportunity to meet the filmmakers, and Dunoon was no exception. I sat down with the guys from Super November and asked them about how the political climate had influenced the film. I think that's been a, an amazing thing, is that when we first wrote, started thinking about the film and writing the film, it was, feels almost sort of in a very cosy sort of like oh we'd like to just you know let's get the Tories out <laughs> whereas I don't think we realise just how much the world has pivoted and uh, the film hasn't changed but it should feel I think it should feel a lot more science fiction but there's after we shot the first shot it in two sections and after we shot the first half Brexit happened literally the day after and then after we shot the second half the day of it Trump was elected and then when I was in the edit I was talking about there was lines in the film about uh, travel bans and as I was editing that on the news was Trump signing his big daft executive order. So it's just, I feel like the whole world sort of just changed around it and we don't actually realise how much has changed in the space of two years. You have a terrible dark power, that's the other possibility. That's it. Another thing, so we basically predicted Brexit, predicted Trump, but also Sean's got a line in it where he's basically denies the existence of gluten. And <laughs> ever since made, making the film, I've been diagnosed celiac. So it's been quite spooky. I, I think the next film we've got to get Josie writing about skint filmmakers winning the lottery. I wanted to hear a bit more about the film festival and its place within Dunoon, so I met up with local coordinator Anne Campbell at the Dunoon Borough Hall to ask her how it all began. It, it all comes out of the fact that this Victorian civic building was uh, semi-derelict and under threat of demolition. Um, there was a community campaign to rescue it and Part of that was a recognition that what the community wanted and needed was a cultural hub. Um, after a long, long road and lots of years of, of uh, work, the building came into community ownership uh, under Dunoon Borough Hall Trust and um, reopened in a sort of fairly rough and ready condition. Um, and in that period, lots of different cultural activities were tested and tried out as sort of action research, if you will, for trying to get the place totally refurbished and get back uh, a, a really good asset for the town. In the process of that, there was a feasibility study done uh, by Shona Thompson into whether a film festival would be something that would work for the town and something that would be worth uh, taking forward. Um, and the, the decision was yes, that we would give it a go. During the film festival, the Dunoon Borough Hall was home to some of the community engagement programming with a World War I archival screening to mark the Remembrance Centenary and a Bring Your Own Dog screening of Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs. But the highlight of the day, and probably my favourite cinematic experience ever, was the closing screening and Q&A of Ney Passaran. I asked Anne about the similarities between the film's theme of solidarity and the community spirit of Dunoon. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it is. It's a really interesting one. We knew it would really appeal to our wider audience, um, and I think it will be a nice, an interesting intergenerational audience as well. I think we'll have all ages uh, there, and it is. It's that feeling of you know taking action. It was it was people coming together and taking action themselves that got this building to the point where there was a 1.9 million pound refurbishment, and it's now. You know, back up and running and warm and dry and, and you know, repaired for the future. Um, but the heart of that is the people and the volunteers, the hundreds of volunteers that have been involved over the years. So Ne Passaran is a sort of nice echo of that community campaign from the grassroots that can actually make change within a community, either locally or internationally, like the Ne Passaran story. Han pasado 40 años, pareciera ser mucho tiempo. Si uno lo mira como historia, es casi ayer. A story of David and Goliath, Felipe Bustos Sierra's compelling documentary, Ne Passaran, tells the incredible true story of the Scottish factory workers who managed to ground half of Chile's Air Force during the brutal Pinochet dictatorship. One of the most curious actions is currently taking place in Scotland where Rolls-Royce workers are letting the engines of Chilean hawker hunters rust in the back of the factory. It was a moral stand that was taken. I couldn't support or do anything that would help that type of government. There's something incredibly special in watching a film about solidarity in a packed cinema with each and every audience member laughing, clapping and cheering along with those on screen. I caught up with Felipe after the film and asked him how it felt to see that reaction from the audience. Uh, it was lovely. We actually came in for the last 20 minutes and the audience, seeing the audience packed and laughing and clapping during the film uh, was, was, was a lovely experience to see. We've made it obviously a while back, so, the, you know, uh, and we've seen it a lot, so hearing such a kind of spontaneous, warm reception from the audience is absolutely amazing, yeah. I guess with the connection to East Kilbride, you probably knew that we're not too far away from there now that the audience might have been similar in a similar kind of inclination that you were going to get that kind of reaction. And tonight, people standing up, showing solidarity, and, uh, and there was a Chilean in the audience as well. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I suppose so. I mean, you know, Glasgow, the greater Glasgow is quite big. And, you know, we've had some screenings where people, I suppose, might not be very open to what the... The, the workers did, you know, came to screenings, there was a bit more colder reaction. So, I, you know, I generally don't really know what to expect. Uh, but, it, you know, there's all these payoffs in the last 20 minutes of the film, which is a good sort of barometer to see how, how the audience responds to it. So, uh, yeah, that was good to see. I just knew that we'd have a good rapport with the audience. That was a really lovely Q&A. Yeah. yeah, it was an incredible film. I was totally blown away by it. And, um, yeah, I'd be curious to know what's, what's next. You've got a bit of a a run in some independent cinemas around the UK, is that right? Yeah, so the film's going to be out in independent cinema for the next couple of months. Um, and we're actually adding new screenings every week because there's so, such a great word of mouth. And people are contacting the cinemas who then kind of contact us to book them. So, and um, there's a lot of community screenings happening around the country as well. So, it's, it's, yeah, it's having a pretty good life at the moment, yeah. I'm looking forward to, to seeing where it goes. Thanks so much. Cheers, man. Good Cheers. You. Thank you. We couldn't have asked for a better day at the Noon Film Festival. All that was left was to hear from an audience member. I asked Jim what it meant to have films like Ne Passaran coming into the heart of the Noon. Well, it's, it's, it can only be good for, for the people of the Noon. I mean, it just, this sort of thing will hopefully put us on, a, on the map somewhere along the line, but it can only be good. You know, there's a full house there and I, I, hadn't, I hadn't pre-booked because you don't have to pre-book in the Noon. And, uh, I just, got slo- I just got slotted in at the end and thank God, you know, I was, I was going to have to climb in a window or something, but I was getting in there, you know, there was no doubt about that, but yeah, it's just brilliant, it's a great thing, you know, more, bring on uh, an expose of uh, the American involvement in Cuba next, please, yeah, that's, that'll do me. Yeah. <laughs>